inspired on Liberty Radio. A very good evening to all of you. Welcome to one more Be Inspired. It's great to be here with you. And I would like, before we go into the message of tonight, before we do anything else, I would like to let you know that here tomorrow in the church in Finsbury Park, we will be doing something very special at 9 p.m. before the night vigil. Now, if you attend another branch, you will be attending the night vigil in one of the UCKG, UCKG branches where you live. Then confirm with your pastor whether this will also be happening there at the same time. I mean, it may be that it will happen at a different time. But here tomorrow at 9 p.m., we will be having the baptism in water. And what is the baptism in water for? Now, I remember, I want to give you my own example, that the very first time that I got baptized in water in the UCKG was when I had been in the church maybe for about seven or eight months and a cousin of mine who was attending the church and taking things a little bit more serious than me was going to get baptized in water that Saturday and I remember she came and she came to my house earlier that day I was at home playing video games with my brother and a few of my friends and she was telling me look James I'm gonna get baptized this afternoon you need to be baptized as well because you're going to the church together with me you need to repent give your life to the Lord Jesus and I think she was there for almost two hours while I played video games uh, trying to persuade me to be baptized in water eventually she wore me down and I went to the service Actually, it wasn't uh, a service. The pastor had booked the baptism in water. And I went and I was not baptized. I wouldn't call it baptized in water. But I went to the waters of baptism in my mind thinking I was being baptized. But you can imagine. I hadn't made a decision. Someone kind of persuaded me while my head was on something else to go to the waters. And of course, I don't have to explain to you that this baptism in water was worth nothing. Absolutely nothing. In contrast to this, sometime later, some months later, on a, a meeting that I attended in, on a Saturday, I remember that I made this, I, I didn't come to that service ready to be baptized, but I made a decision to be baptized in water in that service and be, even though I wasn't ready, I asked my pastor to baptize me. And I, bapt, I was baptized with the clothes I had on my body. And I went home walking, soaking wet. But I had made a decision, not because someone had persuaded me. And the baptism has to be accompanied by true repentance. And tomorrow will be a perfect time for you to be baptized in water. Not because... It's the 31st. But if you're taking this night vigil seriously, for you to enter 2022, dedicating your life to the Lord Jesus, after all, this is what we'll be doing uh, in, in the first few moments of the, the year. The very first few moments of the year, we are going to give those moments to God through the baptism in water or, or through seeking the Holy Spirit, pardon me. And if you are serious about giving your life to the Lord Jesus, surrendering your life to Him, then tomorrow here in Finsbury Park at 9 p.m. you can be baptized in water. If and only if you've made a decision to truly repent of who you were, of your past, and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can confirm with your pastor in your church what time this will happen as depending on space uh, the baptism in water may be earlier or in some cases even after the night vigil but here 9 p.m. we'll be having the baptism in water but now I would like to meditate with you 
in the Word of God. And we're going to read from the book of... Let me just open here. From the book of Isaiah... Chapter 55. Now, I have here with me tonight Pastor Michael Budrum, Pastor Michael Osley, and we're going to be understanding something extremely important when, when it comes to the Word of God. When you speak about the Word of a person, someone's Word, especially nowadays, is not worth much, right? You wouldn't be fool enough to rent a house, to buy a car, to buy a house, to, to go and work for someone without having a contract recognized by a notary, by a solicitor, by whoever it is. And even though it costs you money to pay a solicitor, to pay a notary, to recognize that contract, but you are protecting yourself. I think in, in this day and age, few people would be naive enough to enter into a contract without having something signed. But the Word of God is much more valuable and God zeals after His Word that He doesn't need anyone to remind Him of what He said. The Bible has thousands of promises but God doesn't need to be reminded of what He said. We are the ones who need to be reminded of what the Lord Jesus, what God said in His Word. And the Word of God says in the book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse uh, 11, it, sorry verse 10, it says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Sorry, let me just read again here from verse 10. I got this wrong. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. You know, when a word is spoken through God's mouth, be it by God Himself through a messenger like a prophet, and these words are now written here on the Bible. Once the word of God is spoken, it cannot return to Him without having done what was sent to do. We have the example of when God made the world. When you read the book of Genesis, God said, let there be light and there was light. Whatever God said, it would happen. And nowadays, when, for example, when you're watching this program, when you attend a service in the church and the pastor speaks of what is written here in the Bible, he's not speaking of his own. You may have noticed that every time you come to the church or you attend a, a, a service or you listen to one of these programs, we don't just stand there speaking out of of things we pluck out of a hat. But we are there speaking the Word of God. So the man of God who stands on the altar, he is a, a bearer of God's Word. And when the pastor says the Word, those who believe in that Word, that Word does not return void. That Word returns with... Um, the, the answer that it was sent for. I was watching Bishop Macedo's message this morning from Israel. Tomorrow Bishop Macedo will be in Mount Hermon, ministering the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And he was talking to a family, one of our pastors. 
and his son, one of the the sons, or or the son of this pastor, uh, was born with autism. So he functions very well. He goes to school, but he has some limitations. And f and and they were explaining that for an autistic child they don't have the ability to understand that not everything you say you will always do so the parents were explaining that if they said today that young man is 15 years old but the pastor and his wife were saying that when they would say to his son tonight we're gonna have chips for dinner that child could not comprehend if evening come if evening time would come and there would be no chips on the dinner because you said there would be chips on, on, on the table. So therefore, as my mother, as my father, you have to honor the word that you said. That child could not compute any other outcome other than his parents doing exactly what he said that they would do. Now imagine if a child, uh, you know, it has to be said that child with autism, even though a high functioning form of autism, but if a child, now a teenager, uh, had this kind of understanding with the words of his parents, imagine how God zeals after his own word. Imagine if God would not say something God is not like a person in the street who goes around saying whatever comes to his head and then says, oh, I changed my mind. When God said that he would do something, it's because he would do it. So how many promises are there in the Bible about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? I remember uh, a few weeks ago we went to do the service. Remind me, Pastor Michael, you went with me, you and Pastor Joshua. Lester. Lester. We went to do the service in Leicester and you were telling me about um, you were baptized in the Holy Spirit in a Wednesday service 10 a.m. Was that it? Yes, yes. And, and you were telling me, was it something along these lines that you claimed the promise of God for the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Was it that? Yes. Explain that to us, please. Yeah, because uh, I, I had been in the water, as you said, four times. So you've been baptized in, in not baptized, but in the water four, four times. times and then the fifth time was when I actually got baptized it's a bit similar to your story how I got baptized in water because I was helping <laughs> mop during baptism so you said I might as well yeah no the the actual time I got baptized but because I'd made a decision a few months before to seriously just give my life right, to God right I was so serious about the decision that baptism wasn't even in my mind and I changed and then when I was helping in baptism I, re I, I remember I called the pastor and said, Pastor, actually, since I last got baptized, which, you know, I went back to sin, but now I'm, I'm, do I need to be baptized? And he said, no, because you didn't die from the last time, you're st you were still alive, now you need to die. So that decision, a few months later, I got that Bible verse that uh, if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you're not His. And when I, So I thought I was His before that Bible verse because I was doing... I changed and I genuinely thought I was his until the pastor read that Bible verse. And I remember thinking to myself, so I, upon everything that I've done, I'm still not yet fully his because I don't have the Holy Spirit. So from that moment onwards, I gave everything towards the Holy Spirit. I would seek him daily instead of catching the bus. I would walk seeking him. I would fast. And I think for like three months, I was seeking but my mind, my mind was blocking me believing that I could receive the Holy Spirit because I, in my head, I thought I should have received the Holy Spirit long time ago. Look how long I've been in the church. Look how many times I've been in the water. What, what was it that you, you brought in your mind that Wednesday that you went to attend the service? That Wednesday, therefore, when I reached, all those thoughts were coming into my mind. But I came to the conclusion that the devil didn't have any facts. And what was a fact is the word. That if I seek, I will receive. So that Wednesday service, I sought the Holy Spirit. The service finished. I didn't feel anything. There wasn't anything special in the service. But I claimed the word. I just told myself. Because I sought the Holy Spirit, 
I received the Holy Spirit. So you 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 clung to that promise, yeah. to that word. In fact, the word of God is is full of promises, uh, in, in the, especially in, in the Gospels, about the the Holy Spirit, the coming of the Holy Spirit. He says he will not leave us orphans. There will be a comforter. You know, there, there are many promises there about the Holy Spirit. And the reason why we explain this testimony and um, Pastor Morris is here with, with us now. I don't know when. When will that video be read in English, Pastor Morris? Uh, tomorrow, Bishop. Tomorrow. So tomorrow, we're going to put that video um, on the, um, the playlist on YouTube of Bishop Macedo. And I'm going to put it also on my page. You can look look out for it tomorrow. Because there's a there's a very big contrast. Not a contrast, but we can say there's a very fair comparison. That a child who's pure doesn't have the ability to understand why someone would say something and do something else. You will see his testimony. He even talks about an experience that he had applying for a school where uh, they didn't, in, in fact, he did a purpose with God, this child as a teenager, maybe two years ago. He did a purpose with God in the service that his dad was there doing the service. His dad is a pastor. And he clung to his word and, and because he wanted to get into a school, I think the best school, they, they live in Israel. And he didn't get into the school. And his parents were trying to tell him like this, pastor and a wife listen my son you know it's not every time that something will happen the way you want maybe it was not God's will and but he was saying no mom no that how can you say that if God promised that everything I ask in his name will happen how can you say how how can your word be higher than God's word that the parents no they didn't pastor and wife there's nothing wrong with you know, maybe they thought, oh, it's maybe the will of God is something else. But this child said, no, if God said that everything I ask in His name will happen, then it has to happen. Last minute, he was admitted, accepted into the school. And not only was he admitted into the school. Pastor Morris, you have access there to the chat group. De delete there this uh, demon-possessed person that says he doesn't like us, but every time he comes to watch the program. I forgot his name now. Uh, every time he, he seems he doesn't like us, but he doesn't miss he doesn't miss one service. So this this young boy, he um, last minute was accepted into the school, and in the first year he became the top student of the school. Even when no one believed, when his parents stopped believing, he knew that the word of God could not fail. We have many people, Pastor Michael, who they decide not to, they, they doubt the promise of God when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Tomorrow is the night vigil. If the person has done everything on the altar, if they've done everything in the fast of Daniel, then they have to claim this promise of the Holy Spirit and, and, and know that God doesn't lie. You know, Bishop, there, there are people who will use this faith in order to receive a material blessing. They want a financial blessing. They want their papers. They want a job. They want to get married. They want the healing. So they base their faith on God's word for that. It's written. But sometimes they have this doubt about receiving the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's the thought comes, I don't deserve the Holy Spirit. Or it needs to take time. So if this person uses their faith like this boy, and I, I think we should have this this spiritual autism with us, if I can say, in a good sense. Because when a, an autistic child, as you said, mentioned, as the boy mentioned, or the parents mentioned, if you tell this child something, they're going to base it on your word. Then they, my, my, I was asking my wife, so w w what's the thing with autis autistic children? If you tell them something else, they get confused. It's like the first thing they hear, they're going to stick to that. And it's the same. If we stick to God's word, if we believe in what he promised, it's not going to change just because we want to water down that, that, that word. He said he would do it. It will be done. Now we have to believe on that promise and fight for what we want. That's right. And 
you know, remember that it is Satan's job to accuse you. It's not your job to believe him. Satan is called the accuser. You can't expect anything else different from him. <laughs> when he accuses, that's his job. It's like blaming uh, it, it's like blaming a salesman for trying to sell you something. That's his job. But instead of listening to the, to the accuser, the accuser rather, sorry, listen to the promise that God made. Tomorrow in the night vigil, bring with you the card we gave you now almost a hundred days ago where you were focusing on your spiritual life. You're going to surrender this on the altar and bring your projects for 2022. If you haven't got yours ready yet, take at least 30, 45 minutes today, between today and, and um, tomorrow to prepare yours, to bring it with you in the service, in the night vigil tomorrow. It will be uh, here in Finsbury Park at 10 p.m. till a quarter past midnight. We have some very special things prepared. It's going to be a blessing. Um, I'm going to give you a, a taste. The, the people from Finsbury Park here already saw the soul raising. I'm going to show you just here in a flash, like maybe two <laughs> seconds. Look, soul raising. Wow. But they can't see it very well. No, no worry. Tomorrow in the night vigil here in Finsbury Park in the churches, the pastors will let you know because we are going to raise souls, to save souls like never before. Starting... 1st of January at midnight, the race is on to save souls. Because, my dear friends, it's now or never. The Lord Jesus is coming back and we can't waste time saving souls. All right? Let's talk to God. And you who want, claim His promise tonight by yourself seeking the Holy Spirit in your home. Tomorrow in the night vigil, this will be our faith. He finds we park 10 p.m. And all our churches, excluding Stamford Hill and Kilburn, who will be here with us. The church in Portuguese will be in Kilburn. And the, the Spanish church will be in Stamford Hill. Let's talk to God right now to, uh, to claim what God promised. My Lord, we can say that the world lies. People in this world lie. Organizations lie. Politicians lie. But you could never lie because it goes against the very nature of who you are. Because you are, you, in fact, your, your word says that your spirit is the spirit of truth. You are the spirit of truth. So how can you lie, my Lord? Ah, Holy Spirit, I bless this person who believes in your word, who clings to your word. And that, like Abraham, who chose to believe against all hope, that the same thing will happen to those, my Lord, who chose to believe in your promises, even though they know that they are not worthy, that they are not deserving of your spirit, but that your presence will be manifested, manifested in their lives. Like we were reading here, my Lord, yesterday, that your Holy Spirit, your, you want to manifest yourself in the lives of those who love and obey your word, my Lord. Ah, my Father, Holy Spirit, I believe that in this night vigil, you are going to do something great. You are going to do something magnificent. You're going to raise among us, my Lord, people who were once empty, shallow, lost, but through an encounter with the Holy Spirit, they will know who you are and they will become servants of your servants of the living God. 
Hallelujah. Ah, my Father, we, we bless those people who believe that your words are not like the words of a man, that a man can lie, but your word will never lie. And the promises you made that the Holy Spirit will be poured out upon all flesh, young and old alike, rich and poor alike, that this will become fulfilled in the lives of your people. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. This is our faith. And I would like to say some, I would like to say two things before we finish. Make sure that tomorrow when you come to the night vigil in any of our branches, bring with you Peter, James, and John. The Lord Jesus took Peter, James, and John to the Mount of Transfiguration so they could witness the, the, the magnificent event of His body being trans, transformed, transfigured right before their eyes. Bring your family, your friends, so that here on Friday in the night vigil, they also can have an experience with the living God. Even if they're not your, your family, it could be real, um, you know, distant relatives, could be neighbors, doesn't matter who that person is, okay? And the final thing we want to say, <laughs> the Lord Jesus taught us to bless even those who hate us. So I forgot the name of this person who always um, connects, every night he connects to try to criticize us. I bless you. I just imagine how lonely your life must be for you every night to have to connect here with us to criticize us. I imagine your life is very lonely. But guess what? We pray for you. We love you. And if you step through the doors of the UCKG tomorrow, I don't know where you are. I think someone told me that you live in Swindon, something like this. I'm not sure. Go there to the church in Sweden tomorrow. Take your, your prejudice with you. Take your, your poison with you. Leave it on the altar. You can be transformed as well. We have nothing against you. You may have many things against us, even though you never met me. But you put many things there about me. You, you, I've never met you face to face, but I bless you. I bless you. And I believe that even though you are so lonely, so empty, so that every night you connect with us to try to criticize us, we pray for you. And I believe that your life can be different. May God bless you. Tomorrow we will not be here in this program because we will be in the night vigil together. Bye-bye.